good morning everyone and welcome to the class we are doing the chapter the making of the national movement and under this chapter we are doing the growth of mass nationalism in india in uh, after 1919 so uh, there were some reasons for uh, the growth of this mass nationalism in india and the most important reason was the first world war about which we have discussed in the previous class uh, there were some some positive impact of uh, uh, first world war and the most important positive impact was that uh, the business group and the the, the industrialist they were benefited uh, because of this war and uh, there was uh, some negative impacts also like uh, people people were uh, uh, people people were suffering because of uh, price rise of essential commodities and then new taxes were introduced high rate of taxes were uh, um, started to be taken from the people and uh, side by side one more thing was there forced recruitment of uh, the peasants into the armed forces so all these created dissatisfaction among the people and this dissatisfaction be became one of the most important reason for uh, uh, for for this uh, uh, growth of nationalism and one more thing was uh, very important because when we find that uh, uh, these uh, peasants went to uh, britain in order to uh, fight the war and when they returned after the war there was uh, and uh, there was an understanding uh, by the these uh, soldiers uh, how the imperialist power uh, were exploiting the people of uh, asia and africa the imperialist power imperialist power is britain who was having such a big empire and without any right the britain has uh, britain has uh, took uh, control of the territories of uh, asia and africa so they don't have any right to control the resources of these countries and because of the resources of these countries the uh, britain was so much powerful this also came to be uh, understood by the peasants by the uh, uh, army um, uh, soldiers of uh, british army who were forcibly recruited from the peasantry of the villages so now we find that uh, people have a desire to oppose colonial rule in india now they understood that uh, it's not uh, uh, something like that uh, the the indians are inferior to the british as uh, as uh, it was a very much uh, effort of the british to prove that uh, the british race or we can say the Euro european race is far more superior than the indian race so now it was uh, it, it came to uh, the mind of the people that uh, the british is powerful the british is very um, resourceful because of its colonies so it's not its power it is our resources which it is using and by using our resources it is becoming more powerful so what is the need of the time the need of the time is to remove them from our country so in this way this created a, a feeling of nationalism and then we find there was some other reason also like in 1917 a very important event took place in world history that is the russian revolution okay this russian revolution it took place in 1917 and by this uh, uh, revolution what happened that in russia the rule of uh, um, absolute rule 
of uh, the king who was called Jhar at that time in Russia, it came to an end. And uh, instead of rule of Jhar, uh, they established the rule of um, uh, the workers and the peasants, which was represented by the Communist Party of uh, Russia. Uh, which later came to be known as USSR, United Union of Socialist Soviet Republic. So this was the uh, Re Russian Revolution, which happened in 1917, and um, there was uh, a very great impact on the people uh, all around the world of this uh, revolution, because this was the uh, first time it happened that uh, the the party which belonged to the workers and the peasants that successfully removed uh, uh, an absolute monarchy and established its rule which was based on the principle of equality. So this uh, created, just this generated uh, a feeling of uh, nationalism and this gener also generated a feeling of, uh, you can say that uh, a confidence that if in Russia the workers and the peasants can bring an end to the absolute rule of the mm, monarchy, then we can also, we the Indians can also bring an end to the torturous and exploiting rule of uh, British. So this gave a strength to the people of India, not only people of India, the other people, the people living in other parts of the world, they also, uh, they were also affected, they were also um, get uh, motivated by this revolution. So this revolution also had uh, impact on, uh, um, this revolution also became one of the reasons for this growth of mass movement or mass nationalism in India. And now, the, uh, so this is your second point. The reasons for the growth of mass nationalism after 1919 and then the third point is the advent of Mahatma Gandhi. The advent of So what we find that uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, we all know that uh, he was the leader of our uh, freedom movement and um, this was the time actually uh, he, he was uh, living in uh, South Africa and uh, he came to India in the year 1915 when he was 46 years old at that age he came to India from South Africa and uh, by that time he was become uh, he, he was uh, become a very popular leader in not only in South Africa but his name was known to uh, people around the world at that time because he led uh, Indians in South Africa in non-violent marches against the uh, raci racism which was existing in South Africa. You all are aware of uh, this uh, racism because from class 6 onwards you are getting uh, these uh, 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 these uh, points how racism was uh, there in uh, South Africa. So uh, South Africa uh, in South Africa there was also British rule and where uh, there we find that uh, this racism was there the the whites were considered to be superior than uh, the blacks and it was also considered that they should not be uh, mixed with each other there should be separation between the whites and the blacks and this is what we call the policy of apartheid was adopted by the um, government of south africa that is the british government so uh, there Gandhi started uh, the Satyagraha movement for uh, against against this um, apartheid and racism 
and uh, uh, by when he was um, he started his uh, satyagraha for the indians who were living in uh, south africa because they were also the victim of racism there and uh, we find that uh, when he he started his uh, um, movement his satyagraha in uh, south africa he came in contact with uh, so many indians uh, uh, like uh, so many hindus muslims parsis christians gujaratis tamils north indians uh, upper class merchants lawyers workers all of them belong to india and now gandhi had uh, a contact with these people so we find that uh, after starting satyagraha there in south africa he felt the need to go back to his own country because the same thing was happening in his own country though we, we can't say that we were facing the same kind of racism and apartheid the degree of racism and the degree of apartheid was very high in uh, south africa and in in india uh, we we were not facing that kind of uh, uh, apartheid it's not like that but uh, still we were uh, ill treated by uh, the british the uh, people were not given any kind of freedom and equality and justice so now gandhi uh, was uh, of the opinion that he must go to uh india go back to his own country and he must fight against the british in that country so he came back to india in 1915 and uh, um, uh, his uh, he, the first year he spent traveling throughout the country he traveled throughout the country and he tried to understand the people what are their needs and uh, how was the situation how the british were ill treating uh, the people of india so this was uh, the first year was spent only on traveling and uh, we find that uh, he, he took a lead in champaran you must have heard the name of champaran you you remember when we were doing the chapter that uh, that was about this uh, blue rebellion the indigo cultivation uh, ruling the countryside the name of the chapter was ruling the countryside in that chapter you have read how the british forced the peasants of bengal to grow indigo and uh, you have also read how blue rebellion took place in uh, bengal and this because of this blue rebellion the indigo cultivation came to an end there and uh, mm, then we find that uh, the this uh, indigo cultivation shifted from B B bengal to bihar and now in bihar there was a very high level of exploitation of uh, uh, the peasants by the british plant planters because they forced them to uh, grow indigo and uh, then we find that uh, champaran is the place where gandhi visited and uh, he came to know about the exploitative system of indigo cultivation in uh, champaran and uh, then uh we find that he led satyagra uh, for the peasants of champaran so that is known as champaran satyagra okay and uh, it was uh, done in 1917 okay this champaran satyagraha was held in 1917 and uh, then we find uh, in kheda also he 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 led satyagraha for the peasants this was for uh, uh, the peasants the peasants who uh, who have to who had to give uh, 
a high rate of uh, interest, high rate of uh, um, revenue. These peasants of Satya Khera were not ready to give high rate of revenue to the British government, so they were against this. And in this, uh, um, in this movement, Gandhi led them, and this is known, known as Khera Satyagraha. And then comes the Ahmedabad Satyagraha. Ahmedabad Satyagraha. So, this Ahmedabad Satyagraha was for um, the the mill workers, uh, cotton mill workers, uh, in order to in order to protect their interest. The Satyagraha was done by Gandhi. So, uh, these three important uh, um, Satyagraha was led by Gandhi. Uh, uh, from 1917 onwards and in these uh, satyagraha we see that he came into contact with uh, the prominent leader of the uh, leaders of the reason like when he was um, uh, he was leading the champaran satyagraha then he, um, he he came in contact with uh, dr rajendra prashad in bihar and when he was uh, doing this satyagraha in Ahmedabad, he came in contact by uh, he came in contact with sardar vallabhai patel so uh, in this way we find that gandhi started uh, to take control slowly he was just uh, uh, he was just making his way into the politics of uh, the country through these uh, local movements okay and now we see the next important development of this time we have discussed it the impact of first world war which was one of the most important reason for the growth of nationalism then the impact of russian revolution which was held in the year 1917 then the advent of gandhi the advent of gandhi and these three satyagraha they uh, are associated with each other very closely and then we see the next important uh, we can say reason for this growth of nationalism in India and that is the Rollet Satyagraha or we can say the Rollet Act. So you must uh, uh, understand what is uh, this uh, uh, Rollet Act. We find that in 1919 the Rollet Act was passed by the British, and uh, this act actually it it uh, uh, bring an end to the fundamental right of the people, the right to freedom of expression, and it also make the police very much strong. So, this Rollet Act was uh, uh, criticized by the people because it was against the freedom of uh, expression. It was making the police more powerful. So, it means that the people were having less powers. And so, uh, we find that uh, uh, there was resentment against this uh, law, Rollet Act. And there were leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Muhammad Ali Jinnah and others who were of the opinion that the government had no right to restrict people's basic freedom. Right to freedom of expression is the one of the most basic freedom of the people and the government has no right to, uh, to limit that, that right of the people. So uh, these leaders started criticizing the act and uh, they said that the act is uh, tyrannical it's uh, it's it is the tyranny of the british government that this type of law 
has been passed gandhi ji was uh, very much uh, dissatisfied with this law and he asked the indian people to observe 6th april 1919 as a day of non violent opposition to this act this is known as rolet satyagraha 6th april Nineteen, nineteen. It was to be observed as a day of non-violent opposition. This is known as a Rolet Satyagraha. So it was. Uh, mm, uh, it was a day of humiliation and prayer and uh, hartal uh, took place strikes took place and this uh, satyagraha sabhas were set up to start the movement so uh, this is all for today we will continue with this discussion in the next class